Hey there, RPG makers, game developers, anyone else just joining in. Uh, I am Titan Hex, and I'm here to do the next leg of this journey. So, we in the previous one played with the map editor, sort of looked at all these tools right out, out, right out of the gate, uh, just got a, a feel for them, just, you know, kind of went over what they were. Next, we're going to go over creating a brand new map. So, this one is a little it's going to be a little shorter and it's going to be a little sweeter and it's going to be a little easier to go through so it won't be so much at once and we're i'm looking forward to it so let's go ahead and start by right clicking here in tutorial project uh, or map uh, whichever one feels best for you and just hitting new so right off we have this little options panel this map properties uh, we can sort of edit and manipulate the map when it's created so we're gonna go ahead and name it uh, this name that we come up with is just going to be something that helps us locate it later so this could be uh, temple no let's do well, let's do something like into temple one one and the display name is in in some cases certain plugins and other programs and stuff like that may use the display name to show a graphic or some sort of text that would have the name of the map so we would call this uh, hmm, temple temple to what else all right so next we choose a tile set we usually can create a tile set in the database so you we open up the database we go to the tile set tab and we start creating a new tile set a whole bunch of tile sets have been pre-generated pre, pre -generated for us, created for us in the uh, default um, RPG Maker resources, so we don't have to create a tile set. Uh, we can just use the ones that they have for us. If you want to go and import your own tile set, you always can. It's uh, never a bad idea. Um, it is a bit of work, but having your own tile set is always, always a good thing. So inside we're going to use outside uh there's a few different ones this is sci-fi outside sci-fi inside this is just a regular outside regular inside sort of that medieval feel uh typical jrpg fair and we have the dungeon and of course the overworld um nothing special there really so let's jump right into it and we're going to look at the outside because that's where the whole temple area is going to be it's going to be intro into that big temple which might end up being the dungeon who knows but we want it to be fairly large so we're going to play with the width and height so the typical screen size is 17 by 13 it's kind of the long ways um if you're using a mobile phone it's going to be long ways you'll, you'll probably be playing this game long ways there's ways to manipulate the default um screen size and I can go into that later. Right now, it's it's not really meant for this tutorial. It's usually more of a plug-in sort of style thing. And let's see, width and height looks good. Um, this is going to be one screen, so maybe we want our area to be three screens. So we're going to jump it up to about fifty-one by thirty-nine, I think. So we're going to go with that. So 51, 39 looks good. Scroll type. Hmm. So the scroll type is the when you go to the left and to the right. So if I went all the way to the right, um, I would walk off the right side of the screen and appear back on the left. So it's sort of the looping style. So if I go to the top, I'd appear back on the bottom. Uh, it's usually specific for it's usually used for very specific maps and very specific levels in most cases we just won't have any loop so we won't worry about that encounter steps which is what this is is more you know related to the encounters tab over here we'll go into that later so autoplay bgm means that when you enter this map the music will change in this case we could change it so that uh it's a field music right here so we could have that as the music that plays when you enter the map then we have autoplay bgs which is the background sound so uh, a quick thing about the bgm is that if you set a bgm here and you enter this map the music will change to this if it isn't already 
the same. So if it's the same music, if it's you, you just entered a map from field that has a field for music, it'll just keep playing it from where it left off. However, if it changes, it's going to leave, uh, it's going to go to the beginning of that soundtrack. If you have nothing, so if I had no BGM set like this, then um, it's going to just keep playing whatever was the last one that it was on. So if I leave from, say, the Dungeon 8 and enter into a new map, uh, if there is no autoplay BGM selected, it's just going to keep playing off a of Dungeon 8. So then we go to the BGS, same rules here. Uh, these are sort of the background sounds, the, the, the noise that we hear sort of off in the background. It could be a city, a bunch of people talking. It could be the strange, eerie darkness sound. Uh, it could be the sound of a storm or wind. Maybe you're out at sea. Uh, things like that can be playing uh, alongside the background music to give that ambiance. So we can also have battle backs. Again, this is more specific to encounters, but we can set a battle back so when a battle does occur uh, we can maybe set some stuff like this uh, like a uh, castle in the sky sort of deal bridge uh, with uh, let's see some some dirt weird uh, a poison swamp a uh, whole bunch of different things we can set here so heck that can almost be a fence um, this sort of style a uh, nice little courtyard here uh, a whole bunch of backgrounds we can use just by using two different images so whenever the player runs into an enemy that's the sort of background that's going to load in this map so let's see we can also have a disable dashing so if we say disable dashing then if the player's trying to run which you is default shift in RPG Maker. Uh, if we disable that, then the player can't hold down shift to make themselves go faster, about 1.5 times speed. Uh, they can do that. So disable dashing is good for certain maps where you don't want the player to be able to run. Uh, parallax background. So this is going to show up in the under underneath all the tiles. It's gonna show up in the transparent parts of the tile set. Um, it's it can be there's a whole bunch of different things you can use for it so for example this dark space uh, i can make it so that there's all these uh, floating sort of cliffs uh, and it'll look like this is the bottom of those cliffs like way down below it can be something like this uh, you can also make it so that like the tiles are all down here and as you walk you can see the mountains off in the distance you can do a whole bunch of neat little stuff you can make it look like you're walking on clouds there's some cool stuff that we can do and this loop one allows it so that it, if you're just standing still it starts it, it's looping to the right so you can just see it slowly drifting to the right would be pretty cool with say the sea of clouds um, loop vertically means it goes up and down uh, we can set both and just any speed just to make it sort of look like it's floating otherwise when you walk it sort of shifts with us so you'll see it if you try it out uh, I, I suggest giving some uh, parallax backgrounds here sort of a, a look through uh, just try them out yourself test them out just, they're pretty cool so next we're gonna go uh, into the notes so notes are usually only used for certain plugins you can throw your own notes in here if you really want to, but the plugins usually use them and it's pretty useful. So when you add a plugin, you might use the note. Just be ready for that. So we're gonna go into the encounters. So we can set it so that when you, uh, you can set encounters and monster groups, which are called troops. You can set troops in the database. And once you get that database all set up, you can set, um, some monsters into a troop and then you can go over here into the encounters you can make it so that after a certain amount of steps uh, monsters start to uh, a monster battle will occur so this is about the average amount of steps before a monster battle occurs so I'm gonna go into wait later but you just choose from this list uh, you can also specify by region and I believe we went into the regions last time but basically regions have um, our numbers that you set into different tiles. And if I was to say use specific region ID and use one, then whenever I step, I'm stepping on the one region, 
Um, you could set, by the way, the regions to like tall grass or something like that. Um, if I'm stepping on that region, then I'm going to likely encounter this monster. So you can make it so that usually you have to be off of the trail or on a specific terrain in order to activate a certain battle. So that's very useful. Um, good to know. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the weight. So I'm going to set a few different parameters right here. So the way weight works is it sort of determines by fractions how likely it is that a certain monster will ap appear. So basically if I add the way weight works is if I add up all the weight uh, for that area so in this case the entire map uh, 5 plus 3 plus 1 is 9. So if I add all of that up that is how likely I am to run into the monsters. So there's a 5 out of 9 chance that a bat will appear on the entire map. A 3 out of 9 chance that a slime will appear and a 1 out of 9 chance an orc will, orc will appear. So what that means is that uh, five, every nine, 5 out of every 9 battles on the uh, entire map will be against a bat. Uh, this is just a generalization. This isn't like a guaranteed. Just kind of a um, uh, the most likely scenario so that's pretty much how weight works you'll run into it again for a certain AI it's really good to know so just keep that in mind so let's see we're gonna go back to creating a map 51 39 it is of course going to be outside temple 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 of what ebbs so i'm just showing you how it's done real fast of course no scroll uh, we're not going to throw any monsters we will set up that nice little field four into it uh, we don't need a background sound uh, and we don't have any encounters yet so we're not going to really specify a background or specify a battle back so that's pretty much it uh, now we have this whole big blank slate that we can use i'm zooming out just to see it all you know in the it's easiest to see perspective just one screen so I'm gonna go ahead and use this fill tool fill it with grass and then I can start decorating it like creating a path here so maybe the path goes about like this uh, around here so just a general path uh, maybe create some darker grass here where, where things get crazy so I mean I'm really not gonna go too into details you usually will zoom in and out just playing with certain things to make sure that you have an awesome looking map for me, it's not a big deal because this obviously isn't something that I'm committed to. So nice little area here. So I'm going to show you some cool little shortcuts. The first shortcut is going to be if I hold down my right mouse button and then drag, I can copy. So basically this right here is in my clipboard, sort of this square area. So now I can pull, uh, create this little square area. Uh, if you want to see another example, I could do this, and now you'll see it just alternating like that. So, crazy stuff like that I can do. Just using that uh, right mouse button. So, yeah, not bad. Uh, the next one is the shift trick. So, if I hold down shift, um, and then hold down my right mouse button and copy this area. Um, I can hold down shift again and it's going to copy this exactly. So see, copy it exactly. Whereas if I don't hold down shift, it's going to look like this. So it copies the exact look. There's, there's definitely a few points where this can be useful. Um, maybe I want to smooth out certain areas. Maybe I want them to look a certain way you'll probably find a point where the shift click and shift copy methods and shift paste method all work. So just keep that in mind. So there we go. Uh, that's pretty much the tools. Um, we can always right click a map and hit edit and change it however we see fit. So edit inside, bam. So now it all changes. I of course don't want that. So I'm gonna change it back to outside. Um, change up the tile set we can also create a new map uh, let's name it dungeon super dungeon 
it's not a big deal what we name it right now because it's just a quick show I'm gonna show you guys the dungeon generator so we're gonna go 51 by 51 we're gonna make it a nice big one um, nothing special here as long as we have the right stuff set and we're gonna go to generate dungeon and we're gonna choose a wall and a floor so let's go with this little mossy looking thing right there so now we have a dungeon generated for us it's a very basic very simple dungeon uh, we can start adding rooms to it uh, as we see fit so I can just add a nice room here boom boom so a simple room added and I, I can do little things like that to manipulate it and change how it looks to make it more suitable for what I want it to look like so things like that can always help create a nice little dungeon so it's it's a pretty neat little thing we can do here um, with that uh, we can also use the shift tool so I'm gonna go back out and let's say I want to shift the map to the right now let's shift it up some so maybe it's too far down and I want to shift it up so let's say let's see so up is negative so going up this way this is a negative number going to the left is a negative right is a positive and down is a positive so if I want to do up I have to do a negative so I do negative let's just say 20 normally it wouldn't be that much so now it shifts the entire map it resets it back up and everything's shifted so um, it can be pretty useful if you actually have have a uh, one of those uh, what is it scroll types so if I had a vertical scroll type it, I would be going down here then reappearing over here and heck I could even just connect them like this then I'd have this real crazy sort of <laughs> looping area it would throw the player off uh, and maybe there's a special way to exit uh, you'd have to find something or do something uh, otherwise it feels like you're always looping so cool little things like that you can do just for fun uh, the dungeon generator is pretty useful and so is the shift uh, we can also save image as this basically exports the image of this map um, that can be super useful for parallax mapping which we'll go into at a much later date so that's it that's the map editing tools uh, next pretty soon here we'll be getting into the database just a heads up and that is that thank you as always for joining uh i hope that your first game that you start making is going to be awesome um do your best um if you it would always help me to like comment subscribe feel free to ask questions to tell me what the a tutorial lo you're looking forward to is um, just sort of help me out a little bit and i'll help you so uh, I guess I'll see you in the next tutorial.